So here we are at the end of the French second turn, uh, the end of their 3 p.m. turn. And uh, let's see, all their forces were in command. No problem there. Um, as far as movement goes, um, we saw the cavalry move. Uh, I had to make a few direction changes, facing changes, so it was able to move past the flank of the Anglo-Allied troops. Um, and then uh, also the horse artillery battery that was accompanying it um, stopped and uh, deployed. Um, then we also had uh, uh, one brigade moved itself onto the end here. We had the heavy artillery has deployed. Um, the other brigade that was here has gone off into the forest uh, on the uh, the right end, as it were, of that particular development. Um, various commanders are uh, spreading out to make sure everybody is in command. And then um, interesting developments over here because the uh, Prince uh, Jerome's uh, forces have um, uh, now deployed from uh, March Column uh, and have ma managed to get a long way forward up there. They they are also deployed, and then the two remaining brigades are still in road column, stretching back here. And then there were reinforcements. Kellerman has showed up with uh, shown up with um, part of his uh, cavalry corps. These are heavies, um, and uh, they're still in march column. So significant progress, obviously, has been made um, on the way to Catrebra, which is right here. And of course, uh, the French goal is to hold this spot here where the road um, leaves the battlefield. But um, yeah, our spies tell us that uh, substantial Anglo-Allied uh, reinforcements um, can be expected uh, any time. Um, in other news, uh, of course, these two units here uh, didn't move, so they've been given stationary markers. Uh, this unit was able to recover from disorder just by behaving itself, as it were, keeping its nose clean for um, and spending half a turn to do that. We had uh, morale tests uh, because we had these three units here within close range of uh, enemy and in the target arc. Uh, they were all passed, and the reverse is true. There's uh, a deployed artillery unit here now, so these three units all had to test, and they passed their test. Um, then we had shooting, uh, just the artillery. We had this battery here firing on this unit. Uh, we had this battery here firing on this unit and we had the heavy, uh, battalion here firing on, um, this unit here. All to no result. Uh, desultory fire, as I like to say, <clears throat> and, uh, no one's within musket range, so nothing there. Uh, and, of course, um, there have been no charges, so uh, there's no uh, melee combat. And that ends the uh, French uh, 3 p.m. turn. This is the end of the uh, 3 p.m. Um, Allied turn. So it's the second turn of the battle. And as we can see, we've had um, substantial Allied reinforcements have appeared. Uh, we've had uh, Picton's corps, um, uh, all all the uh, the allies, or the vast majority of the allies, entered uh, from the Brussels road here. Uh, we had one unit uh, of cavalry came down from uh, Nivelle, and uh, we also had Wellington himself, who's uh, made good progress. He's over here. He came arriving on the Namur road and uh, would have liked to have gone straight up the road, but uh, wasn't able to. Had to detour off the road and has even had to cross the marshy, marshy stream here. Um, he's in road column. I don't see any problem with the commander being in road column because uh, that way he can at least have his um, double movement uh, moving um, cross country. Uh, so he's going to try and skirt around the wood here and uh, join up with the troops. Um, so Picton, uh, Picton basically deployed his four brigades here, plain and simple, with the guards here, these two are the guards units, facing off against the French coming up the road. So that's Picton right there. Uh, then we had, um, the Duke of Brunswick 
and um, he has sent his um, light cavalry to face off against the French cavalry here, get right in their faces as close as they could get, uh, and he's behind them. Um, he's not with them because he can't attach himself to them as an army commander because he's not an army commander. Uh, then back here we have um, some uh, First Corps troops, which are some Netherlands light cavalry. Now they have, um, uh, the, the Prince of Orange has attack, attached himself to them, so that would give them a bonus in uh, morale, I think it is, but it does um, endanger him in combat. Uh, then we also had Brunswick sharpshooters have entered the woods here, and I'm going to try and sneak them down here to take pot shots at uh, the French cavalry. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else did we have? Uh, in the center, um, the units have um, stayed where they were, and that's about it. So then we had morale, of course, as usual. Um, so it was morale, various morale testing was done, done down here. This unit has become disordered as a result. Um, all the other units testing morale passed their morale tests. Uh, so then we went on to combat, and uh, we had these three brigades here were have um, the French in their firing arc and within range. So um, because they had moved, they each uh, had two um, dice each for firing. Uh, they managed to score one hit on the French here, and then the French fired back uh, this unit here and indeed managed to score one hit. So we had some casualties there. And then we also had um, firing down here. So we had firing here at this unit, firing here at this unit, and this unit firing back. And uh, we had a couple of casualties there as well. And um, in general, that's it then. So as far as the overall situation goes, obviously um, the road to Brussels is no longer open. Uh, that's uh, fairly clear. But the Allies have got a challenge because um, a lot of their units, as I say, Picton is here, he's got the guards here, but um, they do have a lot of units that are poorly trained. Um, PT, as it were, marked on their um, roster. Uh, that means that they get no free formation, uh, no free facing change. So that means that they're going to be uh, rather um, expensive, as it were, to move around. But apart from that, it doesn't affect them, as far as I can recall. Um, the the other thing, though, is that um, a lot of them have a morale factor of four, uh, which is uh, not ideal. Five is more average, and six is exceptional, like guards units, or seven, I believe, the Imperial Guard are. Uh, so four is definitely at the lower end of the scale. So we've got some fairly poor quality units in play now for the um, allies in terms of uh, the infantry. And um, of course, it'll be interesting to see what happens over here, because although these Brunswick Hussars can face off against the um, French Light Cavalry, the 1st Brigade at least, the 2nd Brigade here now has nothing to stop it from charging uh, this uh, brigade of Nassauers down the end here, um, which is also uh, facing a uh, brigade of infantry. So um, it looks like things are going to get pretty sticky for them. Um, and, well, it has to get sticky for someone. It is a battle, after all. Um, and uh, beyond that, um, well, I mean, I say here's to it, and uh, we look forward to the third turn. Okay, so here we are at the end of the third uh, French turn. So it's um, the 4 p.m. turn. You might think of it as being 4.30 or something like that. Um, and we have had some melee combat, the first melee combat of the engagement. Um, in terms of the turn, turn overall, um, French uh, checked... Uh, Command control, everybody was in command, um, so then we moved on to movement, and in movement, um, this brigade charged the uh, end allied brigade here, and not surprisingly, the light cavalry here um, turned to face and charged uh, the end brigade here. Um, the end brigade, if they're massed brigades and they're um, stationary, 
then that satisfies the cavalry secure situation. So they they didn't they were hardly penalised at all. It seemed to me from the fact that, um, that because there was due to the fact that they were stationary, they were hardly penalised at all. For the fact that they were being effectively atta attacked from their um, sort of flank and rear sort of area, um, and indeed uh, a, br a mass brigade has got um, six uh, dice to use in a melee, and with the um, uh, dedicated guns, they, that gives them another one. So they've got seven dice. So it ended up that the cavalry were attacking them with four dice. Uh, and then we had the infantry attacking them from the front here um, with um, uh, four dice. And, um, but that's jumping ahead slightly. So in terms of movement, we had that. We also had the uh, French over here, this brigade uh, moving through the forest. Uh, has not attacked, but it's moved right up to the edge of the forest, so it is engaged, it is able to open fire on uh, the village of uh, Germancourt here, with the skirmishes inside it. Um, then another movement, uh, This uh, these chaps over here, Jerome's um, division, basically sort of sorted themselves out into some sort of line, but they left um, a gap, the... the, the um, the last of their um, brigades that was coming up moved over to the side here and then turned around to face this way to get out of the way so that uh, Kellerman's um, cavalry brigade can move up here into a nice um, position getting ready to uh, threaten the end of the uh, Allied line up here. Um, and I'm sure along the way they waved to Wellington and his um, aides in their um, march column. Um, then morale tests were taken. Um, pretty much nothing happened apart from the fact that uh, this uh, brigade here got a bit jumpy and um, ended up uh, disordered. Um, so, uh, but but this uh, the brigade that was here, which was uh, a um, Nassau uh, brigade, uh, was perfectly fine. Um, then we, of course, we had combat, so we had the shooting and we had the uh, melee. And not surprisingly, this unit here, although, as I say, it still had seven dice uh, to bring into play, um, it was being attacked uh, with um, eight dice. And um, oh, there was also sorry, there was there was um, no, 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 I'm doing fine. I'm doing OK. Um, and um, this unit took one hit as, as a result. But uh, the Nassauers that were here took three hits. Um, and as they have a unit of skirmishers detached over here, that meant that all the men that were remaining there, uh, they'd already taken a hit, all the men remaining there had in fact been wiped out. So um, that unit was lost uh, completely. Um, the French were a bit disappointed that it didn't sort of rout into the line here because uh, it would have been interesting to see uh, very bad things, as I recall, can happen in Volley and Bayonet when that happens. But um, no, they were... Um, they were uh, ridden down to a man, and then uh, the French cavalry had the opportunity to do a cavalry breakthrough, uh, and they elected to, one of the options is to advance into the space occupied by the enemy and um, make an optional facing change, which is what they did, because they didn't want to uh, haul off... Um, Actually, they, they weren't in a position to be able to charge, continue to charge the enemy, which permanently disorders them. So it's something to be considered with great care, obviously. Uh, but they couldn't do it anyway because they were they were facing this way. And for them to have then sort of turned and gone after this lot would have, um, I be, believe, not would not have been in the spirit of the rules. So um, that's where they ended up there. There was um, some more um, desultory fire. Uh, which resulted, all the firing that took place resulted in, in no casualties at all. Um, and uh, that's the end then of the French 4pm uh, turn.